Welcome to the iNetrepreneur Radio Show. We are so honored to bring you your host, the ultimate celebrity preneur, connecting businesses and celebrities worldwide. Winner of Networking Organization of the Year, best selling author, magazine publisher, trainer, and owner and founder of Network Together and the iNetrepreneur Media Network from magazines, TV, and radio network. We're excited to bring you your host, Mr. Robert W. Jones. Well, good afternoon, good morning, good evening. I am not sure where you are in the world, but I am glad that you're here with us. It has been an amazing day. Earlier today, we had the Art of Connection Contributing Author um, book event, and um, we had nearly 100 entrepreneurs, business owners, and other influencers from around the world all celebrating the next version of the Art of Connection, Art of Connection, Volume 5, 365 Days of Abundance. And I'm so excited about this book that's coming out, and I have to say, all the books I love, they're all like children. It started with networking, it went to inspiration, transformation, gratitude, and now we're in the world of abundance. And you know, 2025, I think, is going to be an amazing time for abundance for each and every one of us. And you know, aren't we ready for that? I mean, for real, I am so ready for some abundance. It's like, you know, I got my grapefruit tree out there, I want some grapefruits, let's be abundant. <laughs> 2025 is coming, and I'm so excited about that, and I want to welcome everyone here. We even have an aloha from Hawaii, so um, so thank you so much for being um, with us on the show today, and I just want to say um, a special thanks to my two guests for being her, here as well. Um, I want to remind everyone not to take away from book number four, um, 365 Days of Gratitude. You can go to mybook.to forward slash Art of Connection 4, that's the number four, see, four fingers. It's the number one international award-winning book of the award-winning book series, Art of Connection. Again, go to mybook.to forward slash Art of Connection 4. Um, you will love that book, and it's only 2.1 pounds. If anything, you can use it as a door stop. No, please don't. It's so much better than that. Um, also, we love your likes or we like your loves. However you want to say it, you can go to facebook.com forward slash iNetrepreneur Radio. I know it's a mouthful, but just bookmark it or go to youtube.com forward slash iNetrepreneur Radio. You can like us, you can love us and so much more. Just have a conversation with us. We'd love to just um, chat with you. Um, we also have two wonderful, amazing magazines, the iNetrepreneur Magazine, which is at iNetrepreneurMagazine.com, and the Contemporary Woman Magazine at TheContemporaryWoman.com. I love how we make such original domain names for everything that we do here. It's just great. I'm sure Lori's loving that. I can't wait to get her on. Um, next and lastly, um, please visit us. Come, come to one of our chapters. Come to one of our events. It really is about going deep. We're waking up from our COVID coma, and it's such a great way that we have the um, we have something like Zoom. We're on today on StreamYard to be able to just you know get to know each other at all sorts of different levels. You can go to ntevents.net. That's ntevents.net. Um, by going there, you can see some of our almost 1,000 meetings and events that we put on each year to help you connect with others who are heart centered and like minded. Again, my name is Robert W. Jones. I'm the host of the iNetrepreneur radio show and i'm so excited now that i get to bring on my first guest and my first guest is the Lori osborne hi Lori, how are you hi robert i am great and you are right i was sitting here chuckling like crazy about your domain names <laughs> <laughs> you know i you know it, it it's funny i i all you know one of my favorite sayings is if you haven't lived four lives by the time you're 50 and i made 50 you just haven't lived enough and I remember back in the day when people were buying domain names like bike.com and shop.com and washmydog.com. You know, we were all going out there and buying these dot coms for one thing only, and that's to bring attention to our products and services so we could create a place of success. And, you know, quite mm -hmm. frankly, that's still the rule. I mean, yeah. as business owners, entrepreneurs, in, influencers, there are two things we're doing. We're either 
looking for that for ourselves or we're helping look for that for our clients. So no matter what, our product is getting found. And the better that we can do that, the more we will have success, won't we? Absolutely. And I agree 100% with the, with the domains being specific to what you're doing. I mean, it might seem boring, but that's how you're found. I mean, it, it really you is. Type in exactly what it is. There you go. <laughs> I know. I, I have never, I've never typed in Fred Flintstone looking for Lori Osborne. I, I just have to admit, I, I mean, go it. figure. I, I'm, very glad, <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> I, I'm sure you have. I'm sure you have. Again, I am with Lori Osborne, um, O-S-B-O-R-N-E. There is no U in Lori Osborne. Uh, she is owner and founder of Biz Bolster Web Solutions. You can reach her at Lori, L-O-R-I, at bizbolster.com or call her at 904-417-7110. You know, Lori, it's, it's really funny, but, you know, we really did have a life before tech. You know, you didn't always create websites. You didn't always, you know, look at search engine optimization as a client's report card. You didn't always take a, a little snapshot on what a brand looks like for a website to say, well, you know, I don't know if that mustard brown and that creamy taupe really go together, right? You know, you know, there was other things that you did in life. T tell us a little bit about maybe a job or two you actually um, you were employed at or had as a business owner before you got to Biz Bolter, Bolster Red Web Solutions. Well, um, you know, I guess we didn't I didn't read my bio, did we? Um, so I've been a business owner for 15 years, and this is my second business. Mm -hmm. um, I was a technical recruiter for 12 years, and I started that. I actually started recruiting in the middle of college when I had no money to pay for college. Um, and I, um, I loved it because I literally got to the point where, so I build websites, but I'm not a coder, but there was one point I probably could have been hired as a Java developer because I was so good at the interviewing. I did the first interview for most of my clients, but if you would have stuck me in front of a computer and said, go develop in Java, I would have been like, I don't even know where you start. <laughs> but well, it was it was a wonderful, wonderful career. I I really did I really did love it. And well, it, it you helped know, me get into tech. Well, well, and yes, and that's why I wanted to start our journey a little bit today because I do know that you were a technical recruiter, so it was a loaded question for you. And <laughs> and and. <laughs> and, 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 and I say that for purpose. You know, there is some meaning behind this question. You know, a lot of people don't actually know what a technical recruiter is. You know, who are the companies that they serve? Who are the clients that they serve? How do you get the, the individual and the companies together? You know, and, and how is you in the intermediary, you know, you know bridge this, this gap, you know, you know, from the two sides? And, and I think that you know, a part of what you learned in recruiting, you also use in the technical side and also the messaging side of your websites. You're still in many ways doing the same thing. You have an audience over here and and you have your clients over here and you're still, you know, bridging the gap between, you know, need, want and desires and those who provide those services. You know, tell us a little bit about your recruiting background and some of the overlap that comes from being a recruiter and now a web developer. Well, I will say the one biggest difference is my product no longer has a mind of its own and cannot chose to not be sold. That was, that's the hardest part of recruiting is you can do all the work to sell and then your product will say, can say, no, I don't want to be sold. <laughs> I choose not to take that job. <laughs> so. it, it, you know, and that can happen. You know, I think the web counterpart to that is shopping cart abandonment, going all the way up to the dance and saying no to actually, you know, pressing submit. So I, I think there's still similarities between both. Either way, you're getting abandoned at the dance. Yes, you've got a good point. You've got a good point. As far as similarities, um, wow, you're asking a question I have never thought about ever. I, ironically, um, you know, I would say as a recruiter, you really have to know what your audience, your client is looking for. 
And that is the same in marketing and web development. You need to, you can't market to someone if you don't know who you're marketing to mm -hmm. and what they're looking for. It's a little easier in recruiting because they give you a job description and say, here it is, this is what I want. Whereas in marketing, you kind of have to figure out what your user, your end client is, is looking for to talk to them. Um, but the other thing is really taking that and then, you know, sometimes recruiting can be like used car salesmen yes. and they just throw a bunch of resumes and go, well, the, the words kind of match. So here you go. And I really felt like that was something that distinguished me is I really understood my clients and spoke in their language and I gave them exactly what they wanted. And I would say those skills still apply in what I do today because I really, I don't just throw a website at someone. I don't just go, well, here's a template. I'm sure you're going to love it. I really want, you know, all my websites are different. I want to understand them, their audience, what they need and give them exactly what they're looking for. And the interview process is kind of that feedback process of, well, I, you know, I don't, I like this about this part of it, but I don't like this. Can we change this or give me another person, you know, mm. or a change in the website world? Well, you know, and, and see, that's the other thing that I like that you, you've you been a recruiter because part of being a recruiter is actually like really being a part of, like it's one part detective. And, and, and I say that because, you know, when you have a person sit across from you, um, what is stated sometime in that resume is not really state, you know, is it at expert level? Is it at novice level? Is it accomplished level? There's, there's all sorts of different levels and you really have to read between the lines because when you are placing someone with the company, you know, they could go 30 days, 60 days, 90 days in and say, you know, Lori, this person, you know, we're really looking at an expert level and they're barely a novice. And so, you know, and I look at that and you have to, play detective when it comes to creating websites as well for your client and, and and what they want you know many times that they 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 look at them let's say and i'll just use car lines they they look at themselves and they're positioning themselves as the the mercedes or bmw and quite frankly you know that they're they're the honda or the honda you know sometimes you have to have some <laughs> you have to have some real conversations with them and, and fact find and be detective to say look you know it you know you may you may see yourself you know um, attracting a certain client, but your audience really is somewhere else. I mean, does that happen as well, like recruiting, like in web development? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, the other thing is is really you have to come with some um, uh, what am I the word that I'm looking for? You have to you have to come as the expert in in either way. And I, I do know, you know, a lot of times my clients will come and they'll go, well, I, I think this, this, and this will appeal to my clients. And you, you have to question that in a way that you're also not going to be insulting and that they understand that really, will your audience really understand that? And will they really respond the way you're looking for them to respond by, by doing that? Um, yeah. You know, I, I have a lot of those conversations, you know, I, I never want to, Tell someone their ideas are, are horrible, <laughs> but, yeah, right. you know, but that's why you're hiring me because I, I you know, I kind of it's about honesty. It's about integrity. It's a, it's about really delivering something that's, that's true for the audience that they're attempting to serve, you know, and I always think about it this way. I mean, you, you have to be, and I'm going to go back to like a recruiter. And I just say that because I'm very, i uh, I know a lot about recruiting, you know, honesty is everything. And, and so many times, you know, a person comes in and they think, well, they're going to get the $150,000 salary. You know, you get a, a person who's coming in to build a website and he, they think that they're going to earn $25,000 the first month, you know, you know, in both instances, it just sometimes takes time. You know, it takes time to build the resume. It takes time to build up your search. It takes time to demand a lot of salary and have perspective. It takes time to, to get organics and sometimes you have to cheat a little bit by doing some pay-per-clicks i mean you know but in both situations it's always about bringing honesty back to your clients isn't it absolutely and the integrity piece you know i i 
I was always very proud as a recruiter that I would be willing to pull someone from consideration if I found out through the middle of the process that they weren't what they were representing themselves as. Yeah. Um, and I'm trying to think how that applies to websites. I think it's it's in the it's just having that integrity on both sides. You know, I want my clients to have integrity and be honest as well, just like I wanted my candidates to be. And you know, sometimes as business owners, we have to make the hard decisions to walk away from business that, you know, seems like it's a good idea at the time, but you get halfway through and go, ooh, bad relationship here. <laughs> right. 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 Yep. Okay. Let's annul this one. <laughs> you know, but, but I think it's one of the hardest things about owning a business, walking away yeah. from business. I mean, it is. I definitely know it's one of my biggest challenges. You know, you don't want to get in that desperate mindset, but you also don't want to be working for someone that makes you miserable or doing something that doesn't have integrity or, you know, those things. You know, and, and which leads us to another thing, walking away from, and I always get a tickle out of this because as a web developer, you know, there's many, there's actually many tools that you can use to put to get a website online, to create that web presence. You know, they all have their benefits. They all have their, you know, lack of benefits. <laughs> I don't know there. The ups and downs, the pros and the cons, you know, of website building and the platform you can be on and how proprietary the, the software can be or how open source. And, you know, one of the things that I've always felt very interesting with you is, is like, you know, you, you said, I'm walking away. I am not going to be married to WordPress anymore where so many entrepreneurs, they just run towards WordPress. You decide to actually go across the grain and use a different platform. You know, and my question really is, Lori, it's, it's like, why run away from WordPress and why your current platform? Integrity. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, that's really it. It's that's it right there. Um, I for the last eight years, I have I have watched other web developers and I have watched many, many, many business owners be completely miserable with WordPress. And I have I have tried at times to support it and to build on it. Um, I made myself miserable last year doing that. Um, and I just came to the conclusion that. I. For me, it's not worth the ongoing income of charging someone to fix all of their issues where I can provide a solution that doesn't have those issues that the client can easily update themselves if they want to, or they can pay me. I give them the option and I don't worry about speed. I don't worry about reliability. I don't worry about plugins. I don't worry if their website's ever going to go down. My websites have never gone down and it's, you know, I just put out a blog that said WordPress may not be the best solution for a small business. And I fully 100% believe that in all of my heart. And it makes, it honestly makes me sad that it's the go-to platform because every time I talk to a business owner with WordPress, okay, maybe one out of 10 say they love it. The rest of them go, I really wish I'd met you sooner. Yeah. It, really and you know, <laughs> for a lot of them too, I mean, the one, the, usually with the one out of 10 who actually really loves the platform is the one out of 10 who actually knows how to use and operate the platform right. because there is a definite um, labor aspect to maintaining and, you know, keeping continuity of the WordPress platform, its plugins, its hosting, its PHP mm -hmm. moduling, you know, et cetera. And, um, you know, even all hosting companies aren't built the same in WordPress, you know, um, is inoperable at times on some hosting platforms where they're not on others. And, yeah. you know, when, when you've chosen your platform, which is one I'm also familiar with, with Duda, you know, it really is a self-contained platform and you actually are able to talk to the team members um, when putting together different aspects that you need to utilize for your platform or it may not be so for um, WordPress. So, you know, yeah. I, you <laughs> get really good at searching help and, you and, really and communities do. when you're dealing with WordPress. You know, get talking and, to someone. <laughs> 
Well, you know, and, and, and it's really interesting because, um, you know, we, we, we've kind of taken our web developers and we're kind of putting them into these different silos. And what I do love about you is you've, you've had the ability to test different platforms and, you know, you made a conscious decision to use one that you're going to supply for your clients. And in quite frankly, not every developer does that. They go in, they hear WordPress, that's what they do. And they know no other option. They know, you know, no other attributes of what makes a different platform really wonderful. But, you know, I, I mean, one of the things that, I, that I've been, you know, kind of dying to ask you is, you know, since you've been, you know, making websites, what are the, some of the things that, that just frustrate the heck out of you you know, when it comes to building websites. And I say this because I was a web developer and I could tell you about 52,000 things that just make me go crazy, but we figure it out anyway and we still make our clients happy. Yes. You know, um, so I'm big on SEO and if I wasn't, this wouldn't be a problem, but I am constantly adjusting images. Um, I was just doing that before we got on this call because image size matters and because image size matters. And I've got one client that they just had images done that they sent over. They're anywhere from 13 to 30 meg each. And a yeah. lot and, of web developers. And I want to, I want to preface this a little bit. Well, hold on. I want to preface this now. Now, now we've heard a lot about size matters, but this is a different <laughs> size that matters. So let's get to that point too, because it's like, okay, 13 meg. So what? Sounds like it's going to be beautiful on my oh, website. Absolutely. Yes. Beautiful. <laughs> if you want to wait five minutes for that website to load. <laughs> and that's what, you know, I, I honestly, I've seen so many web developers just stick the pictures on there, whatever they're given, that's what they do. Well, you want it like 500 K. That's like, I don't even, yeah. I can't even do the math of what that, you know, so I do a lot. I spend so much time modifying images for that one reason. And I will tell you, I mean, when I was working at WordPress, they supposedly have these tools that do it for you. I ended up with a mess on one side. So, so that I would say that and, um, the, the hardest thing for me is when I know what's going to look really good and my client completely disagrees. And, um, and that's so hard for me because I am a perfectionist yeah. and I, you know, like I had one client, they liked every color of green on the platform or, or on the platform on the world. And they thought all greens went together. Well, not all greens <laughs> go together and they shouldn't right. all be in the same space, but what do you do if they insist on it? And so part of their logos, what do you do? <laughs> And, and that that really is tough because sometimes sometimes we can be our own worst enemy towards our own success and you know but I think I think the best thing about that is, is it it's still about being honest and it, it's still about you know being able to state in a very professional and even tender way your opinion it still may you know the client still may say no to you but I, I, I think it shows a lot of integrity on your part to be able to have those conversations. You know, another conversation that, um, you know, you and I talk about is, is when it comes to referrals. And in, in our business, many times being a web developer, you said it earlier, sometimes being a web developer, people feel like, you know, they're working with used car salesmen. You know, how important is customer service um, in the world of well up, um, um, web development for you? I, ab it's absolute. I think in any business that you own, customer service, treating people with respect, giving them, doing what you say you're going to do, when you say you're going to do it, having that communication, it, it's imperative. Uh, yeah. I just moved well, I, I guess I didn't just six years ago, <laughs> I moved to where I am in Florida. It feels like yesterday. Um, smallest area I've ever lived in. There's only 15,000 people in our like main community. And it's really, it's, it's enforced for me and taught me even more how important relationships are and having a good reputation and having that strong customer service, because you can't survive in a small area like this if you give 
poor customer service mm-hmm. and you treat people with without respect and integrity you you won't be referred and you'll lose your business you know in in I, I love that you say that because in a way we're also in another community. We're in the I and Entrepreneur Network community. And in the same manner, you know, there's a few thousand of us, but really when it gets right down to it, you know, there's, you know, a portion of that is who we really see all the time through the different events and meetings and platforms. Sometimes, you know, some just come in for the big events and that, um, you know, reputation in the small community um, it is everything because you know you could you could do the right thing the right thing for years and all of a sudden there's that one day and the wrong thing happens and boy you know two things can happen you you can you can fail you can flail even um but you know communities can also offer you grace but again what i what i love about you know really good communities is if done right they become your vocal advocates to everyone else that's in that community don't they yes Absolutely. Um, and, and I entrepreneur is the best example of that for sure. And it, it's also because you, the relationships, when you flub and you make a mistake, it is a lot easier to be forgiven because you've, you've established that history already of being reliable and having integrity. And we're all going to make mistakes sometimes, Yeah. but if you've done the right thing, most of the time, People are going to respect that and and be forgiving about it. Well, you know, and you bring up something really amazing to me, and and I and I think, I I think it needs to be brought out a little bit more because it's it's something that's not really talked about. But small communities, we don't really necessarily talk about small communities as, um, let's say, a group, you know, or as you know, a, a certain psychometric or a demographic that that is also kind of a sustainable um, place to do business. And you know, so if you're like in Ames, Iowa, or Yulee, Florida, or you know, Midland, Texas, you know, for a lot of business owners, um, you know, reputation they can outgrow their local communities fairly fast. But see, one thing I love about the I Entrepreneur Network is you can be in a 25,000 person community or a 50,000 or 150,000 community, and it allows entrepreneurs to actually create a growth model outside the limitation of their own cities. And see, you've done an amazing job, Lori, of saying, look, I may be in this small town, but I am still going to offer big city you know, to everyone that I serve. And you've done a great job of that because in this community, you've been able to serve through your small town to, if you didn't come here, um, you know, places all around the country. Isn't that true? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yes. I mean, I, you know, when I look at my client list, my clients are all over and it's because of this community. Even Arizona. I have a lot in Arizona. <laughs> Absolutely. I love Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> it's my go-to, <laughs> but yes, I mean it's it, yes, it's it's a great way to expand for sure, and have so much support in the process. Yeah, and 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 I think it's something that that should be brought up a little bit more because we do expand the presence and the ability to grow business because we're so connected and we have such a tight community all around the United States and even other countries. You know, yeah. um, you know my. my Kind of my last spot that I would like to talk about is, you know, and we brought it up just a little bit earlier, and I I try to say it until I'm blue in the face. It don't mean a thing if your website ain't seen. And 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 I I, I say that again and again, and I always say, Do you wanna do you want do you want to work for your website or do you want your website to work for you? And you brought up images. You know, what is it about search engine optimization where so many people, they just don't see the value of it when it could profit them so well? Honestly, I think it's because it's just even you start with the word search engine optimization, it sounds so complex. And so big. That's why we should just say SEO. <laughs> but even that, but it's just, it's so intimidating 
And it people find it easier to just go, well, I'm just not going to think about it because it seems like it's too much to think about. When right. in reality, there are so many little things we can, little easy things that we can do to to just keep pushing that bar and improving things a little bit more. It doesn't have to be overly complicated. Um, now, there are pieces that, yeah, they're absolutely complicated, but just even if we can start with the basics, it would help people so much. But I honestly think it's just, it's, it's just intimidating. And then I, I found, I get really surprised. I find people that say SEO doesn't work or I don't need it mm. or it doesn't matter. And I go, do you have a website? Cause I guess you only want people to see your website if you tell them about it. Right which seems a little counterproductive since your website should be working for you when you're not sitting at your desk. But if you want to be the one giving it to everybody, then I guess you can. <laughs> yeah, you can do it. One carrier pigeon at a time. Right. <laughs> exactly. Well, right. yes. <laughs> Well, Lori, um, um, I'm going to put your information across here. Again, I'm with Lori Osborne without the U. She's owner and founder of Biz Bolster Web Solutions. You can reach her at Lori, L-O-R-I at bizbolster.com or call her at 904-417-7110. And, um, but you can also be found each and every week on Wow Wednesdays, can't you? Yes, you can. Please come visit us at 1 p.m. Arizona time, 4 p.m. Eastern time, every single Wednesday. We would love to see you. And and, and everyone out there, um, Lori has an amazing Tech X, well, now Wednesday, Tech X Wednesday, um, once a month. And that's what the second Wednesday of yep. every month, isn't it, Lori? Yep. yep. And she brings talent from around the world and i mean you really have i mean from graphics to ai to um you know writing and you know ex you know so many different things even other platforms and um, i appreciate what you do for others so we can all learn and at the end of the day th that's what we do provide a place a safe place to go so everyone can grow. Lori, thank you so much for being on the show today. I hope I served you well. Oh, always, Robert. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be part of the community. Well, thank you as well. And you know what? Like Doritos, we can always make more. So let's bring you on sometime again soon. Absolutely. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. I always love bringing Lori Osborne of Biz Bolster Web Solutions each and every time. I love bringing her on. And I love it because what I like to do is I always like to dive into different things each and every time. You know, so much of the time we just look at websites as just a thing that we put up to put some information out there. But, you know, if done right, websites can be, almost be magic. And um, I highly recommend um, if you're out there listening to this show to get in touch with Lori, um, let her work that magic for you. And I'm speaking of magic, I'm also so excited to bring our next guest onto the show. She is the amazing Cindy Eddington. Hi, Cindy, how are you? Great, Robert, thanks for having me. I oh my goodness. Uh -huh. too. I just heard all good stuff about uh, what she uh, brought to the table. I was like, yeah, you know, I'm not very technical. So uh, there was some good nuggets there. Oh, ab absolutely. <laughs> Everyone, I am with Cindy Eddington. She is the owner and founder of Tranquil Heart Wellness. Uh, you can reach her at Cindy with the C 
ending with a Y. So Cindy at TranquilHeartWellness.com or you can call her at 585-703-9244. Again, 585-703-9244. And as, an, as, a, um, as a kiss to Lori, I do that. And I say that because there's all these transcribers out there and I wouldn't give you wouldn't be giving you proper SEO, Cindy, if I wouldn't say your name a few times. <laughs> so there you go. We're working for you here. You know, Cindy, I, I love the name of your business. Let me put it across your Tranquil Heart Wellness. And and I say that I love the name of your business for more than one reason. Maybe more than two reasons. And and I, and, and, and I, and I say it because the world is aching. If I was to take a snapshot of all the hearts in the world, I would say maybe even a majority of them are breaking right now. You know, I feel like people are living in fear. I feel like in certain places we're afraid of our own shadow. We don't know what to believe. You know, the pillar and institutions of education seem to be even conflicted on what they want to teach society. You know, nations aren't in concert anymore. And it just seems like we just live in this real chaotic state. And it seems like the hearts are breaking as well. You know, our mental health in this country is is in a place where I have never seen it before. And I've been in the mental health space from the marketing technology side for over 25 years. But here you are, you're standing up, you're providing a platform in a place, you're helping women rise above some of the things that they've had to take in addition to the broken heart syndrome, as I call it. And here you are with Trank you know, I'm sorry, with Tranquil Heart Wellness. Tell me a little bit about the history of that name and how much does that name mean to you? Well, so I I went through a very heartbreaking divorce and it literally, and it literally broke my heart. And so when I decided to jump into my passion work in terms of coaching full time, that name that just that tranquil that tranquility that i was longing for really resonated with me and so yeah. that's where the the name actually was birthed it was just coming out of me feeling very broken inside and and wanting to feel overall wellness and so that's really how it came about yeah you know and and i and i said three things so the second thing um is the heart itself now, in 2021, um, I ended up getting COVID. And it, it was, for me, the worst thing that pretty much ever happened to me in my life from a health standpoint. Um, my, my son and I had COVID. He was able to get over it in about five days, but couldn't go back to school because he was stuck with me. And I had COVID and it, it lasted for about 30 days. My wife, she was in Las Vegas tending to her mom. And I'm very lucky because the community, I Entrepreneur Network, brought by uh, supplements, brought by liquids, brought by food to the house because I couldn't go out and I had no other family members during that time to help me. And um, I'm very lucky. But what happened in my heart is I I ended up getting a, um, a, 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 bun, a brand old bunch block or something like that in in my heart where the the actual neurons the electrons that go through the heart it died you know covid did that to my heart and you know we always say it oh well the heart you know that's where the energy is and the heart that's you know where the feelings are in the heart and i have to admit i would say those things too and even knowing um the what the heart does for the the mind the body the emotions the soul etc never before did i know how much until part of my heart died mm -hmm. and i've been working very civil you know tell us in your words because of your background you know how and what does the heart function as and how really besides pushing blood through our body Im important is it to us even in the spirit of who we are well, I think as you just pointed out, right, the heart 
<laughs> it pumps our blood, it keeps us going, keeps us alive. Um, but you know, if we think of it from the heart-centered place, I mean, it is to me, it is the center of feeling. You know, that's where we we feel our pain. It's where we feel our joy. Um, that's where we connect. For me, anyways, that's how I connect even more to spirit is through the heart center. Mm -hmm. You know, connecting to other people. You know, it's that heart-to-heart -heart type of connection. Um, so yeah, it's more than just the bodily functions. It's very important in terms of physiology and our bodily functions, but I think in terms of emotional um, and spiritual, if you will, wellness, it, it plays a real big part in that as well. Yeah, and 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 I think sometimes, you know, they they we have this saying that says you are what you eat, you know, but no more is that found than in the the heart itself, is it? Yeah, absolutely. What a Absolutely. Just in terms of like thoughts and feelings, what are we feeding to ourselves? Like yeah. We can either open our hearts or break our hearts or close our hearts off. So uh, yeah, I think that food is one food, again, in terms of sustenance, but sustenance, as you're saying, in terms of emotions and feelings and messages, those all play a part as well. You know, and so for all the breaking hearts out there, and, and I know that there's a lot and I, I, I have certain rituals that I do just to start my day. And most of my days always start with fresh water and a squeeze of lime or lemon in it. That is one of the ways I then I go into a meditation. I do some isometrics and some exercises. And that's how I found my starting of a ritual every day. But not every day is made equal. Some days are like just full of crud. And I'm like, ah, you know, I just for some reason, I just wake up on the crud side and I'm just like, I don't know why. Why did I wake up this way? Who knows? I don't know. I had a pop tart the night before. I don't know what it is, but you know, when when you know, I don't know if you have those days, but but when you do, or if you do, you know, what do you do beyond your ritual to kind of just get you going and saying, you know, okay, I'm going to seize today once again, and it's going to be beautiful at the end. All right. So when I when I wake up like that, I have a lot of rituals that I do in the morning, gratitude being a big one every day and meditation as well. But when I need that little extra spark, like I've got the radio blasting, I've got, you know, great music going on. And, you know, my husband will vouch for this. I'll be in the bathroom dancing naked. <laughs> I love it. Not that your audience needed to hear that. Well, uh, but you asked. But you asked. I did. I did. I did. I did. Lori's like laughing. I see Lori laughing down there. She's like, "Yeah, Robert, you asked, so you get it." You asked. So I'm letting you know. Yeah, that you know, it's, I'm getting ready. Bottom line is, I'm getting ready in the morning. But I'm I'm literally dancing naked, and I'm like, you know, bopping along. And my husband comes in, and like, oh, here she goes again. What do you have? You know, one of those words. I'm like, hey, you know, whatever it takes here. So. And makes yeah. him smile. it makes me smile. We both giggle. It's a great way. Again, laughter is such a great bolster to like get you back up to feeling like really good for the day and charge yourself back up. You know, and I, I it, it really is all about that energy. And, and I think that's so much, you know, and, and, and one of the things is, you know, really recently you, you, you did a pivot. You, you'd worked in the research realm for over 40 years and you decided to come into this crazy place called the world of entrepreneurship, which, you know, I'm like, after being that settled for like over 40 years, which I, I can't even imagine it. You barely look 40 years old, but let's say it's been over 40 years and, you know, now you're in this crazy world of entrepreneurship for those who are thinking about becoming entrepreneurs you know what are maybe three things that you've learned since you've started this entrepreneurial journey you thought oh my goodness i certainly didn't think it was going to be like this <laughs> could you tell us a little bit about that journey yeah you know i've always had a yearning right these these are my passions i i did them as sideline gigs if you will these were all the side quote unquote, hustles that I did for over 20 years. Mm -hmm. um, but I got to a certain point where I was just like, you know, I really, I really want to do this full time because my heart was just yearning for it. And I think the big thing was just recognizing and I tell everybody out there, you're never too old to do something new or jump right. into something else. And for me, it was that literally was like, you know what? 
I turned 60. It literally was, I turned 60 and I said, it's now or never. I'm either going to jump into this because you're right. It's, it's really easy to be comfortable. I was really good at what I did. Um, but it wasn't filling my soul anymore. You know, yeah. and I just knew that I wanted to do more in, in what my passions were. And so part of it is the age barrier, right? I'm like, oh, you know, I'm 60. Like, yeah, you know, I am. I'm in my 60s at this point. So what? It's all good. So I jumped in. It was scary. I'm not going to deny it. It was scary because you. I had this like 40 some odd year career uh, of being in, in clinical research and such. And and it was a scary proposition to jump in. But I have to tell you that once I did, there's no looking back. I yeah. feel that there's so much, I have so much joy in my heart every single day that, um, you know, there's no comparison than working for yourself than working for somebody else. Yes. Are there hurdles? Are there things that I've got to do everything? I'm a solopreneur. I don't even have any employees working for me. So it's like, I got to do it all. So, you know, that, that, those are the things that I struggle a little bit with, but you know what, at the same time, I'm learning, I'm growing. And that to me is really important not to stay stagnant, but to challenge myself and to learn how to do different things and continue to grow. Isn't that what we're here for anyway? Right. Oh, absolutely. And and it, it's so right. I mean, it it it's almost like, you know, for me, it was almost like being 18 all over again. I'm like, oh my God, what am I doing? I'm eight, you know, like I'm 18. It's like, you know, the first time you go into your first, you know, for me, it was my first apartment. And all of a sudden I shut the door and I went into my bedroom and I, I you know, I was like about ready to go to sleep. And I thought, oh my God, I'm alone. It's just me. You know, if that toilet paper roll doesn't get filled, it's because of me. <laughs> and, 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 and I think sometimes, you know, an entrepreneur thinks it, of it in the same way, you know, all of a sudden they wake up and they're like, you know, oh my God, it's me. But I think if you, if you really pursue the knowledge that goes with it and you put the right people in life and you have a passion for it, you go from like, oh my God, it's only me to, Oh my God, it's only me. This is awesome. And, and and I think that that's that's the way you have to pursue. Then the next hurdle, Cindy, is oh my gosh, I have to hire my first person. So that will be another hurdle for you. So I won't <laughs> give you that spoiler just yet. But um, you know, one of the things that I really admire about you is um in, in a different place of interest that you have. And in in certain realms, it's getting it's becoming under attack. And I, I really don't know why in certain circles it's it's becoming so under attacked. And that's yoga. And, you know, yoga to me is one of the most beautiful expressions that actually creates both the mind and the body health. And there are certain circles out there that are saying, well, yoga is not good for you. And yoga is, you know, not like you know, meant to be, and it's, it's an evil thing to practice. And I'm like, why I'm thinking to myself, why is yoga of all things being under attack when it's, it's been in our lives for centuries and it does so much good when it comes to the, the mind body health of us, you know, tell us a little bit about your role in the past 20 years of yoga and why yoga really is so important to have as a part of um, your life. Yeah, I, well, I can't say enough good things about it because it's literally one of these things that that saved me um, when I was going through all of what I was going through 30 some odd years ago. Um, you know, it's still, you know, people, if they don't understand something, there's fear, right? And, and there's a lot of fear if I don't, you know, I don't, I don't get it. Um, but I think that, um, you know, I think, again, there's a lot of, first of all, there's a lot of different forms of yoga out there. So yeah. I can see why some people might have some misperceptions. I mean, granted, we're in a place in time right now where there's a lot of misperceptions about a lot of different things. <laughs> and so, you know, I, I encourage people to like find what works for you. Uh, now, I will say that, you know, us Westerners have turned yoga into more of like just another class. And I'm not right. bashing that because I have taught classes like that. So I'm not bashing it, but it's, that's fine. It's just the asana piece of it, which is the movement or motion piece of it. But it is so much more than that. 
you know, it's a holistic lifestyle in terms of like, how am I treating my body? How am I treating my mind? How am I treating my spirit? You know, so it's feeding into all of those different components so that, again, holistically, it's just it's a lifestyle. It's a healthy lifestyle. It's truly yeah. what it is. I mean, that's what it is for me. So somebody else might have another opinion on that. But that's how I have always looked at it. That's how my training has been about it. It's always about how can I look at myself as a more holistic being? Uh, yeah. For me, it was the connection to source. It truly was more. And, and I know some people out there are like, I've had this in the past where people are like, it's not Christian. Yeah. Um, and I don't want to get religious here or anything. Um, but, but you know, they actually now have what's called holy yoga, which is based for people that are based in the Christian faith, because again, it, it really transcends all of that. It is not just a, re, a specific type of traditional religion. It's more of a spiritual path that you walk and it can embrace any more of the traditional um, religions. That, again, that's how I look at it. Well, you know, and, 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 and that's why I wanted to bring that up because, you know, for me, what, what yoga does is it puts you in the place of mind body practice. And by being in mind body practice, it actually creates in the person who practices it more presence. And, and I say that because if you're more present for yourself, you're more present for your family, you're more present as a business owner, you know, because some people are like, well, Robert, you know, why do you go do yoga for? I mean, you know, you're a business owner. Exactly. I do it because it helps me be in the frame of mind so I can give the best service possible. And I, and I think sometimes we're, we're so we're so concentrated into the wrong things, we don't actually look at the right things and we don't look at the betterment things and we don't look at like the the integrity of, of what it can do as a process or as a practice. And and I'll even bring up, in, in, in a, I, I, I was a, um, a youth pastor in my life. I've done two church missions, um, but I also studied Buddhism. And, and boy, I got a lot of flack from my friends. And I'm like, you know, guys, Buddhism is not a religion. It's actually meant to it's a practice and, you know, and it's a process and, you know, yes, there's tradition to it, but it's not as opposed to Christianity. It actually helps me build my walk with Yeshua, you know, and mm -hmm. my walk with source. And so I, I bring that up because I just want to make sure that entrepreneurs, I want them to know at least through this show that these aren't competing things. These are completing things. And if we work it in the right way together, that they can work in symphony and or concert, you know, for the betterment of ourselves and others. Because I'm always like, you know, without health, you don't have wealth, you know, and, and without wealth, you can't also help others. And and that's why I bring that up, Cindy. And I just really honored your take on this. If, if, well, can I be so get bold. on to that, Robert? Because uh, yeah, I, was, absolutely. I really loved what you said in terms of it bringing back to presence. Because as an entrepreneur, and especially if you're a solopreneur, it can you can start to get into overwhelm. Because there's yeah. so many different things that need to be done, mm -hmm. right? And so, again, that practice, yoga gives you, again, a way, a form, a process, as you're saying, to come back into your center, to be more present, to be more clear. And it clears away some of the cobwebs that can happen because we can start spinning, you know? Oh, oh absolutely. It can be like squirrel, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so when we have that type of practice, right, it, it helps right. us stay centered. And so even just a simple yoga breathing practice, because we have breath with us always, mm -hmm. you know, just having um, a simple breathing practice brings us back into the center when we need it, when we're starting to feel overwhelmed. And I think it's really important for business owners to, to recognize that yoga can bring in some of these other practices that will help you stay centered and guided and on your path and taking bold action when you need to, when sometimes you feel like it's complete chaos. <laughs> oh, oh, absolutely. And, you know, one of the things that I know that you and I both really, I mean, we're there on this and that is, you know, before, be, before you can perform on the outside, before you can find your success, you really have to do the inner work. 
and 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 like you said, you know, you chase the shiny objects and you take the, you know, you, you look all out there for everything that's just supposed to provide everything when all on, you know, all that's ever been wanted is your 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 inside, your your special inner work, your internal achievements, your eternal voice that says yes, not no, that says you're enough, not you'll never achieve. And I, and I, I think it's so important as entrepreneurs, you know, or just people in general to know that the greatest work isn't out there. It's actually here yeah. and it's there each and every day. What are your thoughts on that? And how do you, how do you put that in practice? If you put that in practice? Oh singing my song here. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> to me, inner work is vital. I Again, yoga was a big, pivotal, aha, epiphany moment for me because I recognized when, when first, first of all, if you don't mind, a little story here. The first class that I ever took, a colleague had recommended it to me. And it was a Kundalini class, so again, a form of yoga. And of course, I was very much into fitness. I was a fitness instructor at the time. I took this class and it wasn't really physically anything, right? We chanted, we did some breath work, we sang a song and we ate an apple at the very end. And I was like, oh, this was interesting. But I got up and I walked out of that class and I literally felt like I was walking on air. And it, wow. it hit me in the heart so much. I was like, and I had a moment of clarity where I was like, I cannot believe how I have literally sought for my validation from all external sources. It was like a moment of clarity. And I just knew that, okay, I need more of this in my life because I needed to go inwardly and I needed to do my own deep inner work to feel really connected to source, God, universe, spirit, whatever my yeah. put on that. I knew I needed that. And I think that it's really, really important, especially if you're an entrepreneur, to do your own inner work, as you were just saying, because it, we can get into the whole comparison scenario where we then start, you can have imposter syndrome. You have all these other mm. things can start coming up that start chipping away at that good enough, feeling good enough internally. So I think it's really so important to, to do your inner work, to feel really solid within yourself. Otherwise... You can get pulled off kilter. You can feel like you're being cut off at the ankles because now we're starting to compare to others that might be in the same space. And then, you know, oh my gosh, and not feeling so good enough. So I think it's, to me, it is like vital. And I don't care if you're an entrepreneur or not. All of the clients that I work with, the women that I work with, we all talk about all the time. It's inner work is so vital to your empowerment, to feeling good about yourself, to feeling worthy. And validating yourself, knowing that you don't need the external validation. If you get it, it's great, right? Yeah. Who doesn't like it? It's great, but you have to know in your heart that you are a beautiful being of love and light, just as you are every moment of every day. And and that's really what it's all about. Yeah, you know, I, I when I was younger, I didn't really understand it, but my mom used to say, you can't breathe for other people. You know, and she's so right. And and it really put a lot of perspective into my life. And, you know, I'm, and what she was saying was, is, Robert, you want to go out and help all these people. But, you know, the first breath you need to take is your own. Because if you don't have breath yourself, you're helping no one. And, you know, and I think that that's the thing that, that you do. You, you transform lives and you transform lives by working with people from the inside out and i am so excited everyone i am with i can't even i can't even believe an hour went by this quickly this is just ridiculous everyone i am with cindy cindy eddington she's the owner and founder of tranquil heart wellness you can reach her at cindy um, at tranquilheartwellness.com or you can call her at 585-703-9244. Cindy, you're amazing. Thank you for being on our show today. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope I served you well. Thank you. This was fabulous. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Cindy. Oh my goodness. What two great interviews today on the iNetrepreneur Radio Network. Um, Cindy Eddington and Lori Osborne. 
both wonderful. You know what? I'm just going to say it, friends. Cindy, you're just going to have to deal with me. You're my friend for life now, so you're stuck with me. Lori already knows that. She's been a friend for life already for <laughs> over two years. And so so when I say that, you're just stuck with me. I Laurel Pendle. She's been stuck with me for over 30 years at this point. So um, thank you. Again, my name is Robert W. Jones. W is for Wesley, not Wow. Although I'd like to think it was well. Uh, we meet here each and every week. Well, almost each and every week from 2.30 to 3.30 um, Arizona time, which is that crazy state. It's actually Pacific time. But come meet with us again. I know you have places to go and things to do. But you took this time and this place to do it with us. And I thank you for that. You've been watching the Iron Entrepreneur Show, a production of the Iron Entrepreneur Radio Network with host Robert W. Jones. Join Robert each week as he visits with new and exciting guests who inspire, teach, and mentor entrepreneurs worldwide. Follow Robert each Thursday at 1.30 p.m. Pacific, 4.30 p.m. Eastern, and 8.30 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time.